Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said that. <laughs> I told you something was going to jump off up in here. I felt it. Hallelujah. Praise God. You'll turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 7. You know where the devil attacks us at this morning, folks, is through fear. And we're going to be talking about the many faces of fear this morning. And we got to understand the different ways fear shows up in our life. Fear will show up in doubt. Fear will show up in unbelief. Fear will show up in worry. And folks, when you sit around and worry about everything all the time, it causes you to doubt the Word of God and it moves you over into unbelief. And once unbelief can set in and enters your heart, it will allow a fear to overtake you. And once fear overtakes you, then Satan can have a, have, a, have a heyday in your life. Amen? Amen? See, fear will cause you to miss God's plan for your life. Fear will cause you to... <laughs> cause you to act outside the Word of God. Fear will cause you to go against what you know what you should be doing. Fear will take you to a place where you know what God's Word says, but yet that fear causes you to do the opposite. Praise God. Yeah. We have to recognize the different faces of, that fear will put on you to try to gain access into our lives. We have to understand that fear is the arena that Satan attacks you in. If you would take your faith walk serious this morning and remain in faith at all times this morning, Satan has no way to cause you any harm. But when you are slothful in your relationship with God, then he has a way of showing up in your life. Listen, folks, if we would get serious with the Word of God this morning, if we would get serious building our faith in God this morning, if we would get serious on, on who we say we are as Christians this morning, you know some of us have been coming to church for 20 years now and we still act in the same way we did 20 years ago. They ain't nothing changed in our life. They ain't nothing getting no better in our life. We just come to church every week and say we come to church every week. Folks, it's time for us to break out of that mold this morning. It's time for us to break out of that, well, that, that, that pattern this morning. And it's time for us to step forward in faith in the Word of God. You're never going to have all authority. You're never going to have all victory until you understand by faith it belongs to you this morning. Yes, amen. amen. Good. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, folks, you've got to understand this morning, one of the faces of fear is worry. We're going to talk about worry a little bit this morning. And see, we have to know how to be free from worry. Worry is fear-based, and we have to learn how to deal with this particular fear. See, folks, we worry about everything from our job. We worry about our health. We worry about our children. We worry about how we're going to pay our bills. We worry... Excuse me, we worry about what we're going to eat. We worry about the weather. We worry about silly things. We worry about things that don't even mean nothing. We worry, hallelujah, we worry about a lot of stuff that don't even have nothing to do with our lives right now. And what Satan will get you to worrying about it. A lot of us this morning, folks, a lot of this church, a lot of the church in general overall is addicted to worry this morning. Yeah. They're addicted to worry this morning. Mm -hmm. They would rather sit and worry about how they're going to fix something instead of trusting God to fix it. They would rather sit around and worry about how they're going to get something to happen in their life instead of trusting God to get it to happen in their life. See, they think if they worry about it long enough, they can do something about it. They think if they worry about it long enough, they can change the situation. They think if they worry about it long enough, they can cause something to happen so it won't be there no more. Folks, the only way you're ever going to get rid of it this morning is by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can worry all day long and that worry ain't going to go nowhere. Matter of fact, the only thing it's going to do is going to breathe fear into your life and once this fear comes into your life that's the ground where Satan can attack you in that's the open door Satan gets into your life he can't get in no other way he's got to come in through fear and the only way fear can show up is if you sit around and worry all the time the only fear way fear can show up is if you doubt the word of God the only way fear can show up is if you got unbelief in your heart this morning it's time that we believe what God said this morning, and it's time that we stood up to the devil this morning and quit taking his mess this morning, quit taking his tricks this morning, and quit allowing him to run over us this morning. We sit there and say all authority, all the victory is ours. Is it yours this morning? Do you have all authority this morning? Do you have all victory this morning? Or do you walk around and worry on your mind 24-7? Do you walk around and worry, worry about, well, what's my kids going to do? Well, I worry about what they're going to do with my work. Well, worry about my health. Worry about this. Worry about that. And God said, if you'll trust in my word, hallelujah. It says in way, verse 7, that he has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us the spirit of love and power and a sound mind. So if you're operating in fear this morning, that spirit didn't come from God this morning. That spirit came from Satan this morning. And that's why he chooses to access your life this morning. It is time that we step up in faith this morning and run fear out of our life this morning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The first thing you've got to recognize that fear don't come from God. Fear has not been 
when to run from God, fear comes from Satan because this is the ground he uses to attack you in. If you can learn to trust God and stay out of fear this morning, you will discover that Satan can't have it, can't cause you any problems. You will discover that Satan can't have access to your life. And you'll be secure in all areas of your life. But if you allow fear to have place in your life, it'll cause you to be uncertain about everything you're doing in your life. It'll cause you to be undecided in every decision you're going to make. Okay. You say, well, this is what I'm going to do. And before you can even get over and do it, well, is that what I want to do? Well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Is that what I want to do? Fear will run you crazy this morning, folks. Fear will run you ragged this morning. Hallelujah. You've got to understand this morning. Praise God. If you ever find yourself in a, in a situation where you're operating in fear, please know that God is not the author of fear. <clears throat> You've got to know that. See, and we, we think it's okay to sit around and worry because we say, well, great grandma worried, and grandma worried, and mama worried, so you know that's what I'm supposed to do is worry. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, don't worry. That's right. Jesus says, don't worry. Don't worry. Jesus said, don't worry. Don't worry. Hallelujah. Don't worry. And what do we do? We sit around and worry about everything because we think if we worry about it long enough, we're going to be able to fix that situation. We think if we worry about it long enough, our children's going to get off drugs. We think if we worry about it long enough, cancer's going to flee our body. We think if we worry about it long enough, our marriage is going to uh, supernaturally be healed. It ain't going to be healed until you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The cancer ain't going nowhere until you trust in the Word. Listen, your children ain't going to straighten up to you trust in the Word. What does the Word say? Train up in a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he won't depart from it. Then why do you sit around and worry about it? Amen. See, you worry about, oh, Lord, it's, it, it's 12 o'clock. I don't even know where they are. It's 1 o'clock. I don't even know where they are. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't even know where they are. And the whole time they laying in the bed. And see, now Satan's going to cause you to step into worry, and now fear is overtaking your life, and now you give him an open door for him to come into your life and cause all kinds of other problems in your life. See, you ain't trusting the word, because if you trusted in the word, it says train up in a child in the way he should go, and he won't depart from it. Right, right. I'm going to bed. Yeah. But what we do, we stay up all night. Wonder what they're doing. Wonder what they're doing. Listen, folks, if you do your job as a parent, train that child in the way he should go. You can wipe your hands up and say that belongs to God. And see, and the thing about it is, what he do, what the devil will do, he will try to set a spirit of fear in you, and, and, and he will try to make you sit around and worry all the time until worry. Don't you know worry is you? Don't you know worry is stress you out? See, that's the spirit I felt when I come in here this morning. I felt a lot of people worried this morning. I felt a lot of people stressed out this morning. I feel a lot of people because they, 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 they can't fix their situation or they got situations in their life instead of trusting in what God's Word says. I feel a lot of people saying, well, I'm just going to worry about it. Praise God. See, God operates in the faith realm. He's the author of faith, and the Bible teaches us that the just shall live by faith. That's God's people. If you want God's protection, if you want God's serenity, if you want God's peace, if you want the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind, you've got to operate in the faith realm. Yeah. Satan operates in the fear realm. He's the creator of fear, and if you allow fear to enter into your heart, Satan can control every part of your life. Every part of your life. Satan can control every part of your life. How can he do this? Because you've allowed fear to enter into your heart. See, fear and faith operate by the same spiritual laws. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen to me this morning. They operate by the same spiritual laws. They're the same, but they're totally opposite from each other. That's right. They're the same because they're both spiritual laws. Uh -huh. In other words, when you entertain something, it will cause more of that same thing to produce more in your life. Yes. Right. Listen to me. So, so listen to me. It breeds the same action. So whatever you're entertaining, whatever you're studying on, if you sit around and worry about something, it only causes more worry to be in your life. Mm -hmm. If you sit around and, 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 and entertain something ungodly, it causes more of that ungodly action in your life. Go to Mark 4, 24. Yes, sir. Praise God. Yes, I'm going to make this live. Praise God. This is Jesus speaking, by the way. St. Jeff speaking, okay? St. Jeff. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. Amen. So it says, Be careful what you listen to. That's be right. careful what you put your eyes on. 
Be careful what you entertain in your life. It says, because it's gonna whatever it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear, unto you that entertain ungodly stuff, unto you that watches porn, unto you that watches stuff that ain't supposed to, you ain't supposed to be watching, it says more that's gonna be given to you. Yeah, yeah. That's good. So the more the whatever you're doing in your life, you're gonna get more of that. So if you're living in fear this morning, if you're living in worry this morning, you're producing more of that. It is breeding more of that in your life. Yeah. God. I so when you allow fear to enter in, it causes more fear, but it's the same thing with faith. If you hang around people who operate in faith, guess what? It's going to cause that action to come on you. Yeah. If you hang around people that talk about God all the time, if you hang around people that talk about faith all the time, if you hang around people that's building their faith all the time, yeah. that's why action is going to come on you. It's going to cause more of that faith to come on you. The more faith you got on you, the fear can't enter in you no more, and now you're walking by faith, and now you're the judge, and you're living by faith. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, it's the same thing. If you hang around people with fear in their life, it causes that action to come on you. You ever been around somebody? The whole conversation is all negative. The whole conversation is they ain't not good in the conversation. And it's like that every time you go around them. Yeah. Well, guess what? If you hang around that person long enough, guess what? You're going to be talking just like they talk. Amen. Because what you're listening to is going to be the measure. The measure of what you're listening to, that's what's going to come back to you. And the Bible says even more of that besides. Wow. Amen. You need to pay attention to who you're hanging out with. Amen. You need to pay attention to who you're listening to. You need to pay attention who, 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 who's speaking in your ears. Yes, sir. Right. Hallelujah. I said fear and faith are, to, are, are operate by the same spiritual laws. It's like this right here. Let me break it down to you. It's like north and south are the same directions on the compass, but they're direct opposites. They're both directions. Faith and fear are both spiritual laws. North and south are both directions. They are the same, but they take you to different places. Good God Almighty. See, they have the same meaning, but they take you to different destinations. Faith and fear are the same things, but they will also take you to different places. Faith will take you to love where love and peace and joy is. Fear will take you to where doubt, unbelief, and worry, I mean, uh, worry is. Just like a fraction. You take a fraction. You take a fraction, two over three, and you take the fraction three over two. There are fractions. Both of them are fractions, but both of them give you a different answer. That's right. Faith and fear are both spiritual laws, but they both give you different results. Yeah. Praise God. Glory to right. God. Mm -hmm. See, these fractions are the same, but they're inversely related. In other words, they're opposite of one another. Just like faith and fear are the same, but they're inversely related, they're opposite of one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They mean the exact same thing, but they operate totally inverse to one another. They are both, listen, they are both spiritual laws, but they are opposites. And they're just like fractions. They're both fractions, but they're opposites, and they give you different answers. Right. Just like north and south, they're both directions, but they take you to different places. Just like fear and faith. They're both spiritual laws, but they take, give you different results in your life. Praise yeah, God. Lord. Oh, that's that's yeah. See, listen to me. Faith and fear, one of these brings peace and love and joy, and the other brings confusion, hate, and anger. Yes. One will cause your life to be pleasant, and the other will cause you to live in hell. Uh, I'm trying to get yeah. you somewhere this morning, folks. One will bring faith to your life, and one will bring fear to your life. One will bring God's plan to your life. The other will bring Satan's plan for your life. Wow. Even though everybody in here knows God's got a plan for our life, right? Yeah. Well, know this also. Satan's got a plan for your life too. Yeah. And it's opposite of what God's plan is That's for right. your life. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Listen to me. Faith and fear are two spiritual forces that operate by the same laws, but they're opposite of one another. One is from God, the other is from Satan. God created love, power, and a sound mind. And Satan created fear, which will pull you away from love, power, and a sound mind. 
Fear will pull you away from what God's going to do in your life. Fear will pull you away from God's plan for your life. Fear will pull you away from God's power in your life. Don't you know that fear is a blessing blocker this morning? Don't you know that when you're in fear, it'll block your blessings this morning? It'll keep you from getting any blessings from God in your life this morning? How does fear get in? Through worry. We sit around and worry. What is worry? Worry is negative meditation on the contradictions to the word. <laughs> worry is negative med meditation on the contradictions to the word. Or simply put, put, worry is meditating on the wrong thing. What does the Bible say about meditation? In Joshua 1 and 8, it talks about meditating on the word. Yes, that's right. When you meditate on the word, it means you consider it. Yes. It means you mutter it. It means you roll that thing over. Yeah. In Joshua 1 and 8, listen to me. Yeah. He was trying to get the Israelites to the promised land. Yeah. How did God tell him to get the Israelites to the promised land? He said, meditate on my word day and night. Yes. He said, and I'm going to make your way prosperous, and you're going to have good success, and you're going to, have to know how to deal with the affairs of the world. That's right. Go to Joshua. There it is. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. It says, if you will meditate on this word day and night, yeah. if you will consider this word day and night, mm -hmm. if you will mutter this word day and night, if you roll this thing over day and night, he says that you're going to be prosperous and you're going to have good success. And it's, it's just going to show you how to deal with every situation that you come up with on the world. you got to understand, Satan's an imitator. He ain't a creator. Right. He imitates everything God tries to do. Satan don't invent, invent anything. He just takes what God has and he perverts it. He takes what God has and he inverts it. Now meditation in the kingdom of darkness is called worry. Come on, I'm going to get y'all somewhere this morning. And if you worry day and night, you're going to make your way prosperous about that thing you're worried about. Right, right. If you worry day and night, you're going to have good success in that negative meditation. Just like if you, if you meditate on this word day and night, you're going to have good success in the word of God. See, you will have great success when you meditate on the wrong thing to bring in the past that negative thing you worried about. Let me make this live. Praise God. So in other words, you worry about something that ain't even happened yet. You worry about that thing long enough. You meditate on that thing long enough. You consider that thing long enough. You give birth to that thing. Wow. It wasn't even there. It ain't even existed, but you worried about it. You're meditating so much now it became you bring it to pass in your life. Amen. Praise Amen. God. That's why God don't want you to worry. He says, cast all your care upon me for I care for you. Yeah. Listen to me. Worry is based in fear. Worry is meditating on the things that you're afraid of. Worry is uh, meditating on those things that go against the word. Mm -hmm. When you worry, <laughs> what you're doing is you're meditating on what you're really scared of. The Bible says God did not give us the spirit of fear. Right. So if you're worried and you're meditating on that thing you're afraid of, you're scared of that thing and now you're worried about it and now you're meditating on that thing. God did not give us that spirit. That spirit came from Satan. God gave us the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to be meditating on this morning. Over in Romans 10 and 17, it says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Fear cometh by hearing and hearing the contradictions of the Word of God. Who are you hanging around with? See, it's impossible to please God without faith. It's impossible to please Satan without fear. Mm, mm, mm. So whatever you decide to allow yourself to live in determines who you're pleasing. If you want to please God, then you've got to put in effect into seeking His will every day, and it will cause your faith to be strong. On the other hand, if you allow yourself to operate in fear, what you do, you end up pleasing Satan. Once you start pleasing Satan, you're going to find yourself partaking, partaking in the world system. Once you enter into the world system, listen to me, you're going to live a life of torment, and you will live a life with disturbing thoughts dominating your mind. You know what disturbing thoughts is that dominates your mind? Worry. Sitting around worried about something. Ain't even happening. Sitting around worried about something. You say, well, 
They're going to put me out of my house. Well, have they put you out your house yet? Well, they're going to cut my lights off. Have they cut them off yet? God said, don't worry about all that stuff. He said, trust in me. He said, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. He said, trust in me, and I got you back. That's right. Amen. 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 That's the word. Just like the, he says, praise God, I'm in another message, but praise God. Just like the fowls of the air, mm -hmm. you don't see them worry. Right, right. You don't see that bird, that little sparrow sitting out there on that tree. <laughs> wonder what he's going to eat next. Wonder, 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 he's going to get any feathers for the winter. He understands that God is his creator. He's trusting God. Praise God. Amen. I could go a whole different way. Listen, if you want to manifest things from the kingdom of God, you have to operate in faith. But if you want to uh, uh, manifest things from the kingdom of darkness, then you're going, to, uh, you're going to be operating in fear. See, God has a perfect plan for us, and if we will take time to follow his plan, we will find that our lives are not only manageable, but they're enjoyable. How many people in here really enjoy their life today? Amen. How many people in here can say, I enjoy everyday life? Amen. How many people in here can say, my life is manageable today Amen. because I put my trust in God? Yes. See, if you are getting God's plan for your life and getting God's will for your life, he's going to make your life manageable and he's going to make your life enjoyable. The devil also has a plan for us that causes us to fear and we find our lives full of chaos and confusion. See, we, we feel like that we're losing our mind, and it seems like everything, every, like everything that we, we do never brings any peace. Listen to this right here. Faith will cause your life to work out in a pleasurable way. Fear will cause your life to work out in a chaotic way. Faith will walk, cause your life to work out in an enjoyable way, and fear will cause your life to work out in a miserable way. The decision's up to us this morning, folks. Right. What are you med meditating on day and night? Yes. Are you meditating on, oh, the devil's going to get me. Oh, I'm scared. Of you. See, you've got to come out of that fear. That spirit did not come from God. Right. Right. It was not derived from God. That spirit came from the enemy. Matter of fact, that spirit is the enemy. Praise God. Oh, yes, the spirit of fear is Satan. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, these two things operate on the same laws, but see, they are direct opposites. Fear is contaminated faith. Listen to me. Fear will cause you to be tormented with the cares of this world. Fear will cause you to be tormented with anxieties in this world. Fear will cause you to be tormented with troubles in this world. And it will cause you to live a miserable life. Fear causes you to live in a constant worry condition. Fear causes you to live in a constant, uh, 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 constant state of uh, 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 undecisiveness. It'll cause you to be uneasy in everything you're doing. It interferes with your comfort. It interferes with your peace of mind. It interferes with your serenity. And it puts you in a state of constant worry. Fear will so dominate your life, listen to me, that all you ever do is look at the wrong in your life. All you ever do is look at the wrong things that's going on in your life. And fear has got you so blinded, it's got blindfolders on your eyes, that you're worried about all the wrong in your life, that you never look at all the blessings in your life. And you'll start talking about all the blessings in your life instead of and talking about all the wrong in your life. You will find that the, your faith is going to be built up and you'll find that fear can't come upon you. If fear can't come upon you, Satan cannot have access to your life. If Satan can't have access to your life, you're going to walk in victory. It says the just shall live by faith. So the more you talk faith, the more you build your faith, the more that faith is going to come on you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. See, whenever you find yourself operating in fear, you're, you're, what you're doing, you're operating in contaminated faith. Your faith is being contaminated. You come to church here, you hear the word, you go out of here and you're strong. Boy, I got my faith built up. But the first thing that hits you on the outside of this church, you allow fear to come in and it contaminates your faith. It contaminates the word you just heard. It causes you to be uncertain about all the decisions you make. It chokes the life out of you to the point that you're afraid of everything that you come across. It chokes the life out of you to the point where you're skeptical of everybody you deal with. It'll cause you to reject God's plans. It'll cause you to discredit the kingdom of God. It'll cause you to distrust God. And eventually it'll cause you to totally reject the word of God in your life. 
It's a progress, folks. It's a progress. In other words, fear comes in. I'm going to get ahead of myself. Praise God. It's a progress. And what it does, it grows and grows and grows. Huh? And your faith does too, though. Praise God. See, what is it that will contaminate your faith? Fear tolerated will be faith contaminated. Fear tolerated will be faith contaminated. So you've got a decision right now. If fear comes on your life, don't tolerate that fear. And it can't contaminate your faith. Yeah. Praise God. That's good, that's good. Praise God. See, when you allow yourself to sit around and worry about everything because you can't control everything, and listen, I've lived this before, folks. I used to want to control, if I felt like if I didn't have control over everything, that everything wasn't going to work out. And I felt like I had to have control over everything. And what happens is when I couldn't have control over it, fear would set in on me, and then I would worry about it and not coming out the way I needed to come out. And see, and once the fear come in, Satan had access to my life, and now he was the one in control of me. God was no longer in control of me because, see, I was trusting myself to have control over that situation. When I couldn't control that situation, that's when fear come into my life. Praise God. You say, you say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. You're lying, you're resting. I'm going to go and say it. See, you are worried. <laughs> when you are worried, when you worry, you're tolerating fear. When you tolerate fear, it contaminates your faith. This is why just coming to church on Wednesday morning and coming to church on Wednesday night is not enough. You have to feed your faith every day, and you've got to feed it more than you feed your fear. When you feed your faith more than you feed your fear, you're going to be secure in who you are. You're going to walk around in the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind, and fear cannot get in your life in any way, shape, or form. But it takes more than coming here on Sunday morning. It takes more than coming here on Wednesday night. It says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This is your job. I can get up here and preach the word to y'all, but it's your job to get in that word every day. And build your faith every day. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Fear cometh by hearing and hearing the contradictions to the word of God. <coughs> so you keep hanging around them old, uh, whatever they are. See, if you put up with fear in any form, if you put up with fear in any degree, <coughs> hello, somebody get that. If you put up, <laughs> if you put up with fear in any form, if you put up with fear in any degree, if you put up put up with fear in any level, then it will contaminate your faith. You say, "Yeah, Pastor," but you don't understand. You don't understand what I go through, Pastor. You don't understand all the hardships in my life. You don't understand all the stuff that I deal with in my life. I don't understand everything you're dealing with, but what I do understand is what faith in the Word of God will do for you. I do understand that part. And, you can't, and, and what, what you're telling me, you don't understand, Pastor, what you're telling me, you tolerate some stuff you shouldn't be tolerating. And that fear tolerated is what? Faith, faith contaminated. contaminated. Amen. Praise God. Listen to me. Hallelujah. See, <laughs> when you operate in fear, you give uh, uh, Satan the opportunity to operate in your life. But when you operate in faith, you give God the opportunity to operate in your life. So ultimately, folks, the decision is ours to make. What do you allow to control your life? Are you allowing God to control your life? Or are you allowing Satan to control your life? Are you allowing faith to control your life? Or are you allowing fear to control your life? This is something you can't take lightly, folks. You have to make a choice that I'm going to feed my faith so much that they ain't no way fear can affect me in any way. Right. Right. But it's your decision. The only thing I can do is preach, preach to you on Sundays and Wednesdays. Now it's where y'all engage into the plan of God. Stuff, now it's where y'all engage into God, what God wants you to do for your life. Yeah. See, it's up to me to find out what God wants me to do in my life. Yeah. It's up to you to find out what God wants to do in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, mm, it's real simple, folks. In order for Satan to operate in your life, in order for Satan to cause you problems, in order for Satan to cause certain things to come to pass in your life, he's going to have to get you over into his arena. And his arena is the arena of fear. Listen to me. He can't cause any problems in your life if you will learn to protect your faith this morning. Satan can't do nothing to you this morning, folks. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. 
He's given us the spirit of power, love and power and a sound mind. So anytime you're not operating in love and power and a sound mind, what is a sound mind? I know exactly what I need to do. And I know exactly what I need to do in every situation. I know exactly what I need to do to, 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 to operate wisely in the affairs of the world. In other words, when you meditate on that word day and night, it says that it will make you prosperous. It says it will give you success. And it says it will give you the wisdom to, to deal with the affairs of this world. See, when, when you're operating in fear, though, you walk up on something and you don't know how to decide on that thing. You don't know, well, do I do this or do I do that? No, if you're operating and meditating in the word day and night, God gives you the answer immediately. Amen. And he said, do this. Now, here's the thing. Well, man, I don't want to offend this person. I don't want to hurt this person's feelings. Then you're going to operate in fear. You're tolerating something that you know that ain't right. Now you're tolerating the fear and it's contaminating your faith. And now the just live by faith. You're not the just no more because you ain't living by faith. You're living by fear because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Right. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. You've got, you got, you got to tell it the way God tells it to you. Amen? Amen. See, you have to learn to program your mind in God's Word and keep it programmed. This has to be your life. You don't have to entertain the things of the world. Listen, folks, when you listen to ungodly stuff, I'm going to make this live so good right here. When you listen to stuff that you know that ain't of God, and y'all know exactly what you've been listening to, y'all know if y'all been listening to something that ain't of God, or you sit there and watch something that you know that ain't God. Or you sit up there in your computer room at 2 o'clock in the morning and watch porn on that computer. You know that ain't right. You know you ain't supposed to do that. What you're doing, you're engaging in things that contradict the word. This is where the fear is getting in. If you will learn to protect yourself and stay in faith at all times. In other words, meditate on that word day and night. The fear can't get in, folks. You have to recognize that you're operating in fear when you're doing these things, folks. You've got to recognize when you're doing something that you... Praise God, I like this. When you're doing something that you know that ain't it right in God's eyes, you've got to recognize that you're operating in fear. You're not just operating in, I'm looking at something bad on the computer. You're not just operating in, I'm listening to something I You recognize that you're operating in fear. Fear tolerated will be faith contaminated. Praise God. Glory to God. See, listen, folks. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. I don't want you to just sit in here and hear me preach. I don't want you just to come here and sit in here and hear the words that come out of my mouth. I don't want you to come in here and say, well, I went to church and heard what the preacher said. I want this to sink so deep in your heart. I want this to become a reality in your life that you understand that Satan is out to destroy your life. Satan came to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. And I want you to recognize that and let it become a reality in your life where you take it serious enough when Satan's out to kill me, Satan's out to destroy me, Satan's out to wipe everything out I am. But Jesus said, I'm going to give you life and life more abundantly. Amen. But what you going to operate in? What you going to say and listen to? What you going to say and watch? What you going to allow in your ear gate, in your mouth gate, in your eye gate? What are you allowed in your life? Well, whatever you're allowed in your life, that's the same measure that's going to be meted back to you, and you're going to even get more of what you're already getting. So if you don't like what you've been getting, change what you've been doing. Praise God. Glory to God. See, Satan can't enter in and he can't bring to pass the contradiction of the Bible without you having fear. And the only way that fear can get in is by what you allow yourself to be subjected to. See, when you subject yourself to the things of the world, it contaminates your relationship with God. It hinders your relationship with God. Does God still love you? God loved you when you were sucking on that crack pipe. That's right. That's right. Does God still love you? God loved you when you was laid up in adultery somewhere. Does God still love you? God loved you before you come to the altar and set Him in your heart. He loves you regardless. Amen. But what I'm talking about is receiving blessings in your life and living a life of victory. In other words, having all authority, having all the victory, have overcoming everything in your life. 
No, Pastor, I think I'll go home and worry about this. <laughs> I think I'll just go to the house and, you know, just, just ponder what's going to happen at work tomorrow. And just consider, you know, they probably going to lay off this week. Uh, uh, hey, they, they, you know, yeah, I probably ain't going to get no unemployment. You know how they do. Go ahead and keep saying that stuff. That's what you're going to get. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. See, whenever there's no fear, you can't find any operation of the devil in your life. But when there's fear, you'll find yourself worrying all the time. Worry is one of the faces of fear. See, when you worry, it causes you to enter into unbelief and you find yourself bombarded with all the world's problems. That's what's in your mind. And now that's what you're thinking about all the time. Now you're meditating on all the world's problems. You're meditating on the economy. You're meditating on the stock market. You're meditating on the gas prices. You're meditating on how, how high the groceries are. Guess what? You're going to become prosperous and, prosperous and successful in that meditation. But when you, still, when you start meditating on my God shall supply all my needs. <laughs> Listen to me. See, God owns the stock market. The stock market don't own God. God owns the economy. The economy don't own God. So when we're operating in faith and we're doing what we're supposed to do as far as bringing our tithe to the storehouse, we're in God's economy and it don't matter if gas goes up to $50 a gallon. Pull up there. Fill it up. Fill that thing up. I, need a, I don't need a gallon. I need 25 gallons. That's right. Sir, that's going to be $750. <laughs> fill it up. Right. Matter of fact, fill his up over there too. <laughs> oh, oh, the blessings keep. See, people come to me all the time. And I hear them say that everybody has some kind of fear. Yeah. Well, first of all, you need to be careful what you say about everybody because you don't know everybody. Right. You, you, you're trying to justify you having fear by saying everybody has some type of fear. You don't know everybody, folks. Listen to me. Secondly, you need to recognize you can't say a little fear is all right. You ever heard somebody say, well, you know, a little fear is all right. See, fear is not all right in any amount. See, listen, fear cannot be tolerated at any level because when you say it's all right to have a little fear, it contaminates your faith to the point where Satan can have access to your life and it causes your trust in God to be affected. Uh, 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 effective, not infected. Effective. Affected. Let me say that right. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. See, fear, listen to me. This is, this is it right here. Fear starts with a seed. And it's not all right to have it in any amount. It says God has not given us the spirit of fear. So it's not okay to have it in any amount. You can't allow yourself to tolerate any amount of fear. When you say that a little fear is all right, you've got to understand that that, 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 that fear is a seed. Do you know how small a seed is? You say, well, you know, that a little bit of fear is all right. But once you allow that thing to get planted down inside of you, that thing starts growing. Yeah. And it grows and grows and grows. And the next thing you know, you are, you, 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 you've allowed fear to enter in, and now you're into worry, and now worry has caused you torment in your life. Now you're living a life of torment because you said, you know, a little fear is all right. It's not okay in any amount, folks. Because right. <laughs> you know what? It says God has not given us the spirit of fear. So if you say a little bit of fear is all right, God did not create fear. God, it didn't come from God. It came from Satan. So you're telling me, well, a little bit of Satan's all right. That's basically what you're saying. Listen, he, God, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of love and power and a sound mind. Fear is not natural. If fear were natural, God would be supporting it. Listen to me. If fear was natural, God would be supporting it because He's the one who created all natural things. He is against those things that go against the nature of God. You've got to understand this morning, God is not the author of fear. He's not the presenter of fear. He's not the creator of any kind of fear. The attitude you must gain this morning is fear is not okay. You've got to say, I am not going to allow no fear in my life. I'm not going to operate any fear. I'm not going to have any of it in my life whatsoever. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to trust in God. I'm giving God my whole life. I'm totally surrendering to God, and I will not allow any fear to come into my life. My declaration has to be, I will have no 
fear whatsoever. Where there is no fear, Satan can't operate in your life. Listen to me. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. If you allow fear in your life, you're never going to be strong in your faith in God. Listen to me. You're never going to get all the manifestation out of the Word of God because you've allowed fear to come into your life. You sit around and worry about everything that's going on in your life and you find that you don't have no trust in God no more. You've got brought yourself to a place where you don't even want to pick up the Bible no more. You've got yourself in a place you don't even want to pray no more. You don't even feel worthy enough to talk to God because you've allowed fear to set in your life and now worry is your faith. Fear tolerated will be faith contaminated. Praise God. I'm closing on that. Come on. Come on, musician. The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but He's given us the spirit of love and power and a sound mind. Y'all understand that word this morning? Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. You wonder how Satan's getting in your life. I'm telling you how Satan's getting in your life is through worry. I'm telling you how Satan's getting in your life is through fear. You say, well, uh, Pastor, you don't understand. I've been sick for five months. I've been sick for five years. It don't matter. You don't allow fear in any amount to enter into you. You keep speaking by his stripes, I'm healed. You keep speaking, I'm healed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You keep speaking that Jesus has got my back. And you keep building your faith every day in the word of God. And eventually that faith's got to flee. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 